What's good, Bingster Mafia? It's your girl, Bingster, back at it again with another video. Now, today, guys, we are doing something totally different. Um, this is not a prank. This is not a challenge. Um, and it's it's nothing that I usually do. It's something totally different. But um, today, we have a special guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Cambria. What do, what do people call you? Mommy or Brie. Mommy or Brie. Okay, so um, the reason why Cambria is here uh, mommy is here is because she wanted to um get a message out there to the younger kids um and basically tell her story um on drug addiction if you want to go ahead and um, kind of elaborate more and tell them about that i'm here to speak about younger kids getting on drugs so basically to get my story out to help younger people or help older people younger people other people struggling with addiction basically right 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 Okay, so um, I had I have a few questions um, that I've prepared for her, and um, she came up with some questions as well. Um, I feel like this video will help a lot of kids, you know, not to go down the wrong path, um, not to choose certain things. You know, addiction happens, but um, it really happens to the best of us, but it's just really how you get through it, and, you know. So the first question that I want to ask you is, um, how old were you when you first started, like, doing drugs? Um, I started using heroin. Well, I started using weed at about 13, 14. I started using heroin at, I'll say 16, between 16 and 17. So for, for you, like when you started using weed, was that like the normal thing in your, in your family to just to do, just to do so? Pretty much. And it just was like the hype. It was the new hype to smoke. So I hung out with people that were older than me. So they smoked. So I just smoked with them. Right. So with that being said is um, certain certain people, you know, if your mom tell you don't hang around certain people, you know, don't do it because the people you a phrase that I always go by is you are who you hang around. And a mm -hmm. lot of people say that they're, they're not, but eventually you will be. So just make sure you watch who you hang around. Um, so heroin, is that like what made you start using that? Well, it started out being around it, like watching people hustle so then I started hustling and eventually, like I lost my twin brother to prison. So then one day I'm just like, just let me try it. Cause I was looking for something more than weed to numb me. To numb your pain, right? Yeah. So then like 16, I tried it and then it just became my best friend from there. So when, if you don't mind me asking, um, what, what happened to your brother? Well, like you said, hanging out with people, you become mm -hmm. who they are, whatever. Um, you said how? Hmm. You said how that happened? Yeah. I lost him because he chose to go out and rob, like armed robbery, mm -hmm. and gone bad. Two people got shot, and he ended up getting sentenced to twenty five years. So, yeah. And that was your twin brother. Yeah. You guys were close, right? Hell yeah. Yeah. Um. So basically, that's what that's what caused your addiction, um, and for you to just you know get over get over that. I wouldn't say it caused it, but it just played a part for numbing at that time because like I went through trauma growing up, mm -hmm. and so starting we young that numbed the trauma that I went through growing up. But then you know at some point it's it's just not enough. So then yeah, I just tried it, and it really numbed me like numbed me a lot. So okay, so what what do you think? like kept making you use this drug mm. like even though i'm pretty sure like in the back of your mind you knew what you were doing was wrong but what kept making you use this drug the feeling it gave me like being able to be numb feel good and you know drugs make you into a different person so like just just being able to go out and do things that i haven't done before because i feel like a whole different person like not being myself like, it helped me to not be shy or not be scared, nervous. It just, like, matched. So you were functional. Feelings. So you were be able to function when you when you had this drug in your system? Yeah. At some point, I wasn't able to function, but in the beginning, yeah. In the beginning, yeah. So can you tell me, like, a lot of people look at heroin as a bad drug. Can you tell me, like, what's one of the worst things that you've done and you're like, okay, well, I got to stop doing this? <laughs> Okay, one of the worst things I've done while using drugs, I would have to say is um, robbing somebody. I caught a case when I was 
18 going on 19 a little before mm -hmm. and then from there that was like my rock bottom because I'm not the type of person to take from people I feel like you work hard for what you get mm -hmm. and so for me to be put in a position where I feel like I have to take from somebody in order to get mm -hmm. it just like just showed me like yeah it's time to quit and I got nine months for that so then that just was like my wake-up call like yeah I can't do this no more so after you did nine months in jail did you come home and still use that drug again no you was just absolutely done yeah so you think that if you if you didn't have to go to jail you probably would still be on drugs yeah on drugs or dead because nowadays they put in so much into drugs like fentanyl so much different different drugs they mixing it all together because at some point people are not get high no more right and it's killing people like you're absolutely right yeah. so while you were using these drugs who do you think that you hurt the most um I would have to say my twin brother. Yeah. Because, like, being so far and not being able to, like, be here. Mm -hmm. And, like, just, you know, like, when you're a twin, you have some type of, like, connection. unspoken connection. Yeah. So, being so far and not being out here to, like, make sure I'm not killing myself. I mean, I'm killing myself, but in a literal statement and just, like, I don't know, being scared to get that call that I... Oh, 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 did mm -hmm. or yeah, did I think, kill somebody else? Did you tell? Did you tell him that you were using these drugs? No, but like after a while, I just became a different person. So at some point, he just was like, "I feel like you're doing something other than weed," and then that's when I just was like, "Yeah, I'm addicted to heroin," and then like he just started crying. So I didn't really have to tell him because it just. He just knew. Yeah, he knew I wasn't myself. Right. So, um, basically, this is the, the main purpose of this video. But what what advice would you give to certain teens um, battling addiction or certain teens who who aren't even, you know, on drugs, but, you know, a certain way to cope with, cope with their pain other than drugs? Like, what advice would you give to, to teens like that? The main advice I will give to teens or just anybody struggling with addiction is to seek help. We all, like, as people, I feel like as African Americans, we feel like we can't go out and seek help for being depressed or that we can't talk to the counselors or therapists that they make for us. And so we sit and we hurt and we just let that hurt build. And some people go through more trauma than others. But you let that hurt build so much, you start to look for things to mask it. And then it starts with weed. And then it starts with popping perks, like the new thing that's out, or doing mm -hmm. acid, or just any type of drug you look into mask that pain. And then once you come off, you're going to be dealing with that pain again. So seek real help. Don't, don't try to be with the hype or everybody smoking or you trying to smoke with them mm -hmm. and really they hurting but they not telling you or just find somebody that you can confide in and somebody that's like a good influence and not just somebody who just like want to see you doing the same things as them right. right so while you were doing these drugs you had nobody to confide in i mean i had my twin brother but in a sense i didn't because he in prison for 25 years so it's like yeah i can confide in him but I feel like I'm hurting him more than helping myself exactly. because it's nothing that he can do. Mm -hmm. So, no, I really didn't have nobody. Okay. Um, what was the hardest part for you um, during your during your addiction and like sobering up? Oof. Dealing with them feelings, like dealing with the feelings of losing my twin brother, the trauma I went through growing up. So did that make when you when you did drugs? Did that make you think about it a little bit more? No, it made it just made it be just like I didn't even think about it. Using, I didn't think about. I thought about losing my twin brother, but it wasn't like heart aching. It wasn't as bad. Yeah, it was just like honestly, I just didn't care because I'm I'm like high. I really didn't care about nothing. Mm -hmm. So so the part when you were sobering up and not able to use these drugs, you were just dealing, having to face certain mm -hmm. trauma that you went through and all the pain. Yeah, and I got into a class in jail called Sober Living, mm -hmm. and it, it was for three months. And, like, you had to dig deep, like, real deep. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was being, getting off of drugs is probably the most I've ever cried in my life because it was, like, I'm just dealing with so many different emotions, and, whew, it was hard. 
Like I'm just sitting in jail, I was wishing I can just get out and get high or get high at that moment so I didn't have to deal with nothing. Really? So how do you deal with pain now? Like I'm pretty sure that you go through certain things. How do you deal with that now? Um, well, I'm pregnant, so I can't smoke. I can't right. really, I can't drink. I just, I just cry. Like dealing with pain now, I just cry. I, I'm seeing a therapist now though. Mm -hmm. So I just cry for the time being when I think about it. And then when I go to see my therapist, I just, I just have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think that you being pregnant and getting ready to have a little one, do you think that's like, going to change your life drastically and make you make the right choices and things i mean that's what people hope for but in reality being a recovering addict is is going to stick with you forever right. it's a part of you so yeah i can try to say like yeah i'm gonna be this big person this different person but it's like anything could happen i don't right. want to be overconfident and i don't want to be underconfident i just right. want to be i don't know what content was, yeah content or so basically you just take it day by day that's the main thing that you have to do in addiction one day at a time i say one second at a time because anything can happen in the next five minutes anything right, right so how long like how long were you on drugs from the age of for two years two years yeah so you 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 smart enough to to that you caught it because some people have been on drugs for a long time but two years is a long time too as well to, yeah two years is like getting off drugs you go back to the age that you started at yeah hell yeah so you oh how do you feel like like deep down how do you feel like you just overcome this or do you think it's just still like something that's that, i don't know elaborate like how do you think that you know how when you say it, you're off of drugs like how do you think that 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 made you or how how did that come about oh no i still don't get the question so i understand like when you went to jail and things like mm -hmm. that so do you think you being in jail basically just made you clean no what made you strong enough to get out of jail and be like okay well i'm not doing this no more like how did you overcome it um the biggest thing that i feel like helped me to overcome addiction is getting help like mm -hmm talking to other people um having the similarities like we all go through some of the same things and like people don't speak upon it mm -hmm. so like i talked to people that was going through worse things than me and it just like i don't know it made you realize like your situation is not that bad i mean it's bad in my mind it's bad because like my twin brother is gone for 25 years mm -hmm. so it's like i don't feel like it can get no worse than that but it's people like that don't have their kids or like Right. People that's never coming home. So I'm like, it could be worse. Do you think, so you, did you not have a connection with your parents? Yeah. With my dad, I did. Me and my dad are very, very close. Did he have a, did he, um, have a part in you changing your life and becoming like a better person that you are now? Yeah, I would say, yeah. My dad has had a very positive impact on my life. Like just my dad took me home from the hospital, me and my twin brother. Mm -hmm. And, like, he came to see me every visit, every week, made sure I ate. And so, like, I don't know, just being the support that he is, just, yeah, it just pushed me forward. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, you guys, you, 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 want, you want to talk about some more stuff? or No, all I want to say is that if you're struggling, seek help. If you feel like you can't go to your parents, Go to one of your friends who's who is not using drugs or like a big sister, anybody that you feel like could help you at that time. Drugs is not cool. like, And it's nothing to play with. Yeah. So with that being said, if you are, I'm a, in all honesty, I'm going to put down here the a hotline or whatever they people go to, the number right there. If you are on drugs, you need to seek help or talk to an older person who you look up to or talk to somebody just like she said. Um, so that you can actually get better or at least try to get better because these type of drugs are killing people. Um, mm -hmm. These type of drugs are, you know, causing other other crimes. They're, they're causing people to do things that they're not. And although trauma happens to everybody, everybody goes through things, doing drugs isn't the way to go. So 
just make sure y'all get help if you are battling this i, I tell a lot of y'all if y'all smoke weed and y'all constantly do it all the time it will lead to something else so yes an and people say oh my parents been smoking for this long okay and then most of y'all parents smoke and probably drink too or mm -hmm. doing drugs behind y'all that y'all don't know mm -hmm. weed leads to other things it really does perks acid the new hype that everybody's on the acid perks all of that Y'all look at it as just, oh, we're just having fun. That's the part of the addiction in your family that's in your bloodstream that you're dealing with at that time. Right. So, And a yeah. lot of y'all don't understand that genes are strong. Very. Like, you know what I'm saying? If, if your family, if some of your family does drugs, drink, all of that, you are, you know, you, you're you probably, I don't know what a percentage is, but you, nine times out of ten, you will pick up that habit if you start doing it. So mm -hmm. um, make sure y'all, you know, put the drugs down and say Be no. sober. Deal yes. with it. Be sober. Deal with your pain. Get get help. You know, a lot of people, they go through things and instead of getting help, they go down a different path and that's not okay. That's why most of our, our, our people, our African Americans are in prison. You see a lot of our African Americans downtown mm -hmm. panhandling, drinking these beers. And that's just, because yeah they didn't they weren't strong enough to change the cycle in their family they weren't strong enough to ask for help and they weren't strong enough to not go not drink not do drugs not you know beat addiction so y'all just have to open your eyes because i'm pretty sure a lot of y'all know right from wrong if you're doing drugs yeah definitely don't do it so y'all i'm gonna end that video on this note you got something else to say no Thank you for coming and telling your story. I Thank appreciate you. For you. Me. Um, if y'all have any questions for her, you wish your social medias. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to come to you and ask you about it. Cambria her. Brewer is my Facebook. I'll put that down there too. Yeah. So, And I'll put it in a link in the description. So make sure y'all contact her if y'all going through something. Do you think people can talk to you about their addiction or do you think that's going to affect you? No. I love being able to help people like that's struggling and have people to look up to me for being so young and putting it down mm -hmm. i'm always open to help people or talk about it or i know some people can't speak about their trauma or refer you to people that i know have helped me and impacted me mm -hmm. referring you to them or just i'm always open to help or talk anything all righty guys if you got there you guys have it make sure y'all hit her up if y'all if y'all battle an addiction if you have any more questions or if you want to come on, on on my youtube channel and tell your story Make sure you hit me up, DM me, because that's what she did. So, yeah, y'all, we gone.